So, quick little disclaimer here, because I know some people are going to come on here and be like, ah, rah, rah, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So, I definitely do want to preface this. <laughs> I want to preface this video with saying, obviously, there are times in which training through not a full range of motion makes sense and it can be more advantageous depending on what your training goal is at the moment. But in general, building a strong base of training through a full range of motion is what has worked for me and my clients and many others. So I'm more of an advocate for that. And then you can go into doing those other things. But I think first, uh, building a strong, capable body that moves in the way that the human body is meant and built to move makes the most sense. So recently I made a post that sparked a good amount of controversy um, and uh, it seemed to be pretty triggering for uh, some people. Bruh, 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 bruh. He needs some milk. So I figured why not make a video addressing this topic head on. Should you train through a full range of motion? One thing to take into consideration is that everybody's in range position or in range of motion is going to differ based off their anatomy. So like their limb length, their torso length, um, their current or past like injury history, their current state of flexibility. However, from my experience of working with over 200 plus people in person coaching, the majority of those things don't tend to limit people from eventually achieving full range of motion with most of their movements. Now, there are obviously certain things like uh, certain chronic conditions like arthritis and certain structural limitations like someone being born with something longer than the other or I don't know, a missing leg or something, whatever it may be. Obviously, some of those things might limit somebody from eventually being able to achieve full range of motion with certain movements, but those are a little bit more rare. So when should you not train through a full range of motion? In my experience, there's three different ways, right? So the first one is when you're rehabbing an injury. So in rehabbing injuries, the goal is always to eventually build up to where you're able to move through a full range of motion pain-free. But in my experience with myself and with some of my clients, we pretty much build up to whatever range they can move through pain-free and then sort of continue to progress them and progress them until they're able to move through that range of motion pain-free. So even still, the, the end goal is still eventually getting to where we're moving through a full range of motion. Number two, in specific phases of training where it might be more advantageous to restrict your range of motion. So you could be, you could think of hypertrophy movements where you're trying to overload a muscle in a certain range. You could think of uh, when you're trying to get stronger um, with certain movements. Um, or you might use things like pin squats, pin presses, lockout squats, certain things like that where you might be using those mo those type of restricted movements in your compound lifts. And certain sport specific movements, so think of like your movements that will mimic a vertical jump or like powerlifting where you're only needing to go down to like 90 degrees or whatever the depth is that you need in order to make your lift for your meet or whatever. And number three, if your bodily structure is physically unable to move through a full range of motion, so I sort of alluded to that earlier, but it would be like, again, like something that genetically you're born with or some chronic condition that you have and more than likely you will already have known that, hey, like I can't move through this range of motion because I have this chronic condition or I have this genetic disorder or whatever it may be. So why should you train through a full range of motion then? So number one, if you're an athlete especially, progressively building up to training through a full range of motion is your friend. If you look at sports like basketball, football, baseball, track, any other sport out there, when you look at people going to run or to sprint or to jump or to cut, they're never doing those movements at just 90 degrees or less than that usually it's at some extreme range of motion if you look at a run uh, a runner slow down their knees are always over their toes if you look at uh, someone going to jump slow down knees always over their toes a lot of times they're breaking 90 degrees if you look at a baseball uh, pitcher going to throw a, a ball a fastball again like their <laughs> their shoulder is way past 90 degrees and some obscure angle um, that it's difficult to mimic those things only simply training at 90 degrees. Number two would be even if you're not an athlete, it, it prepares you for life training through a full range of motion or, or eventually building up to. And I, I always like to use the antidote example like try, try if you drop a piece of paper on the ground or a pencil whatever, try picking that up off the floor without 
your knees going over your toes or breaking 90 in a squat or without bending over rounding your spine right it's, it's pretty difficult to do right and then when we do these repeated movements in life like there's some people that never have stepped in a weight room or a gym and they have back issues or knee issues and stuff like that you can't necessarily blame that on people going past 90 degrees in a squat or rounding their spine under load um, as causing those things because again some of those people have never stepped in a weight room never stepped in a gym a lot of times it's those repeated life movements that their body just isn't really prepared for but they repetitively do those movements and they're not strong in those ranges and a lot of times they end up with like chronic pain and issues and stuff like that because they're just weak in those ranges and or, or they lack the flexibility so how do we safely work through training through a full range of motion I usually follow two principles. The first one would be simply working on increasing your flexibility. Um, that's gonna allow you to have access to more ranges. Um, and you can do that via the different flexibility modalities like your static active, your hammock active, your static passive, and your dynamic passive like stretching. Number two would be to humble yourself. And that's a big one. Um, I've had to learn it the hard way. But one thing to, that you're going to notice, unless you have access to that full range of motion, you can squat cheeks to sneaks, you can press past 90 degrees, you're gonna notice that in most cases, you're probably not gonna be able to do those same lifts with that same load that you were only taking to 90 degrees. And that's okay, um, as long as you check your ego and throw it out the window and you know that, hey, like I might have to start over a little bit, not fully, but you're gonna have to drop the weight a little bit. And the good thing about that is it's gonna keep you a lot safer because you're not gonna be trying to go through those ranges that you're not yet strong in with that same load that you were using before. So it's gonna progressively make you stronger. It's gonna get you stronger pound for pound. So you're gonna be a lot stronger overall than what you were before, even though you might be lifting less weight um, through the whole, through the full range of motion now. So to close, when people try to fear monger you, and specifically in this case, in the realm of fitness and range of motion, it shows how little they actually know about the human body and how little they've studied it and how to train it correctly. And probably how little they know about progressive overload. Um, all these inexperienced people is like listening to your broke friend for financial advice. You could listen to some of it, you could listen to none of it, take it with a grain of salt. Don't listen to the fear mongering. Study, train smart, apply the principles for yourself, stay flexible, stay strong, and stay athletic.